people say that RVs are made poorly. And if you're going to buy an RV, it's a big purchase. Uh, there's three major expenses in life. Number one, having a child. Number two, your house, whether you rent or own. And number three, your vehicle, your main car. So a RV would be right next to that or right up there because... You know, even if an RV is going to be just a recreational weekend um, use for you, it, it's still going to cost you anywhere between $20,000 to $100,000. Somewhere in that range is the average RV, whether travel, trailer, or motorhome. And if you're going to live in it, you can say, well, I'm going to live in it, so it will be my housing cost. It's still a lot of money. You know, because you're spending that one-time fee, whether you finance it or pay cash, most people finance it. Um, and then you still need somewhere to park it. You're going to have to pay some campground feed or you're going to need gas, somewhere to tow it. And so, you know, look, RVing life could still be a great life, but there's a big cost to it. So the, the issue becomes being very cautious on which RV you purchase and that's why you try to buy things below your means so if something goes wrong you can back out of it without destroying your financial life and right now you know we just experienced a hurricane as I make this video and so right now I don't think you'd want to buy an RV that was for sale on the west coast of Florida why uh, because it could have rain damage. It could have got flooded. I, I looked at the storm surge in the Naples Fort Myers area. And vehicles went totally underwater. So let's just say there's a, a travel trailer on the RV dealership lot. It went totally underwater. And then as the water receded and weeks went by and that RV dries out, I think they're probably still going to sell that RV. So... One is I would be very cautious on buying anything from the west coast of Florida immediately. But two is a lot of those RVs will probably go to auction like cars go to auction. And they'll probably get shipped somewhere else in the country to sell it. So I'm saying all that to say, you know, you got to be very careful because obviously if it has a motor and it got flooded, it wouldn't start, right? It'd have severe water damage. But a lot of times, even me, I say to myself, well, that's why I would buy a travel trailer, because if it doesn't have a motor in it, it's less to take care of. But the opposite of that is if that has water damage, you, you, don't, you can't tell by the engine not starting because it doesn't have an engine. And a lot of times, water damage is not visible. You know, sometimes it's certainly visible. You see, like, a leak in the roof, you know, but if it's dry uh, and you're on the dealership and it's not raining, you may not see that. So, you know, that's another thing, you know, maybe when you go pick an RV, try to go when it's raining, almost, it's almost better, even though it's inconvenient, because you'll get to see if it's dry inside during the raining period. But look, at the end of the day, look, everything has a pro and a con, right? Because I, I've owned a condo, I've been in homes, and the renovations never stop there. So y y there's no way you get around life, okay, without problems of buying a house, buying a condo, renting renting in a bad neighborhood, buying a car. The thing I'm trying to say is be cautious, buy below your means, so if something goes wrong, you have exit strategies or you have repair funds. And I would be a little bit cautious on buying something. You know, as an example, I was looking at something for sale uh, on the west coast of Florida. And now I probably wouldn't buy that RV from that dealer uh, <laughs> because I'd be concerned about water damage right after a hurricane. So... You know, as time goes by, people forget, uh, but I would say, you know, it's something to remember. Um, you know, like I say, you know, when you go to visit a dealership, uh, you know, conditions are usually nice or you're in the showroom and it's hooked up to the utilities and the conditions are perfect to look at an RV. But you have to remember, you know, What's it going to be like when conditions aren't perfect, when there's high wind, high rain, you know, et cetera, et cetera, because that's life. You know, life are not perfect conditions. It shouldn't scare you, but it should caution you on, you know, the construction of an RV, uh, living in an RV or, or buying an RV, and, you know, 
how it deals with uh, brutal weather. And you could say, well, I'm going to tow it away so it doesn't face brutal weather. Well, that's great. A lot of people have that idea, but a lot of people get stuck in their routine. They don't tow it away or they don't drive it away. They stay in an area that's affected severely. And the second thing is you can't always avoid all inclement weather. So just something to be conscious of, uh, of RVs, how they're made, the weather. I still think they're uh, great, uh, but I think everything's great, okay? If you can buy it below your means, okay? And you are, you know, because life is going to happen. Whether you buy a house, rent an apartment, uh, buy a car, buy an RV, life's going to happen, okay? And, and the naysayers, the negative people, they're always going to be there to stick that stick in your eye. Oh, I told you so, you fool. This, So that's not what it's about. Those people, let them burn in hell. But I pray for them. Let's, let's stay positive. This is about you buy below your means so that even if something does go to crap, you're not a fool. Why? Because you bought below your means. And you accept that there's pros and cons to everything. You're wise and you're an overcomer. And, you know, you, you have options. Okay. Remember, people who don't have options, guys, they're the negative people because they feel trapped and desperate. And desperate people pull other people down into the water with them. Overcomers focus on surviving the rip current, okay, and getting back to shore. Okay. Survive another day. And so hopefully these words help you. This video helps. If it does, click that thumbs up because I want to be positive. I want to help you. I don't want to hurt you. And uh, share the video. Subscribe. Click that blue join button. Thank you to all my members. One day at a time. Sometimes one minute at a time. Okay. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.